channel should help with that. It's called Reinventing the Cookbook. It's moderated by Samantha Hart. She is the group editor of Luxury Home Portfolio at Better Homes and Garden. Uh, please welcome our next channel, panel to the stage. I'm here with uh, Kevin Yu from Side Chef, and I have Ben Harris from Drop Kitchen and, ben, and David Feller from Yumly. And I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about the consumer problem that their products are trying to solve. What is the consumer problem that you're solving, and are you reinventing the cookbook, or are you doing something completely different? Kevin, do you want, we want to start with Kevin? Since you Great, yeah, so my name is Kevin. Um, our company is called SideChef. We have an app that essentially walks you through the step-by-step -step process of cooking from start to finish. Um, and yeah, I think we are kind of reinventing a, a little bit of that. Um, some of my background is actually very different than a lot of you guys out here. I, I worked in video games for 10 years, so totally different with a company that did World of Warcraft. And, and that's a lot of uh, kind of my philosophy in terms of uh, going into the cooking is making making the process uh, very easy for people like me, which literally three, four years ago, I didn't know how to cook. So um, I still remember searching on Google, you know, like making sure, like, how do I zest a lemon or so forth. And uh, starting from very basic places, um, I think cooking, um, again, I think once you get involved in it, there's, there's so many things you can do. And once you get to the cookbook level, you can actually understand it, but you need a certain proficiency to actually be able to get there. And we are actually just focused on a little bit of the cooking for dummies, like making sure that you know, one of the b biggest search terms on Google around cooking is how do I know water is boiling? So, I, you know. <laughs> I think that's a good reminder for everybody also, you know, in the crowd to, to see that there are a lot of people coming from a very different place in which they're learning, you know, from, from different avenues in terms of how to cook and we're trying to kind of cater to that and make it really, really simple with a, we have like automatic timers, step-by-step -step pictures, um, step-by-step -step like videos, um, we create a little platform that allow people to upload their own recipes and share their creations, um, but you know, focusing on those kind of fundamentals. Okay, and Ben? Um, like a lot of people here today, you know, I think what we're most excited about is just enabling and empowering anyone to, to make great food. That's really what we're focused on, and we're doing that by building the operating system for the, for the smart kitchen of the future, you know, um, and really building a, a pipeline of smart products that will then talk to that interactive recipe platform that can really bring recipes to life. And the, uh, the, there's a, a deep integration between our hardware products and the, the recipe app itself. And the first one being our, our uh, connected kitchen scale that can walk you through any great recipes. And you know all the, the pipeline of smart products that we're releasing really take into account the smart products of the future that are, that are coming out in the, for the kitchen of the future. Um, and you know, really where the disconnect is now from where recipes are today, you know, people, recipes right now, it's a, an age old format, from, you know, it's a, a thousand years old from just that block of text, a list of ingredients and an image. And then with all this huge range of smart products that are coming out for the kitchen right now, there's a disconnect from being able to, from those recipes being able to relay any information to the products themselves. So what we've done is really uh, come up with a, a new format that uh, means that recipes are not only beautiful uh, to the user for them to see them, but also a machine readable that they can actually relay to the products in and around your kitchen as well. So there can be that deep integration between hardware products and, uh, and recipes themselves. Yeah, and Dave, what do you have to say about this, this idea that are you really reinventing the cookbook or are you just doing something that's complementary to a traditional cookbook? Yeah, so I, I started young. Hello? Hello? That's on. <laughs> Uh, I started Yumly because I love to cook and I hate mustard, and I was doing the same thing over and over again, which was trying to find things that met my taste, and it didn't make sense to me that we had these great services like Pandora and Netflix that understand you, but we eat three times a day and we don't understand food. So really the problem that we're tackling is food discovery and answering the question of what should I eat, and we're starting with recipes and food, but ultimately that, that question branches out into a lot of different areas nutrition, health, fitness, um, calendar uh, or schedule, uh, budget. And we want to be able to understand everything that makes the person's food decision and help make that algorithm 
uh, simpler and automated uh, by using technology. So we basically turn food into data uh, in order to mine it and access it, and we uh, bring all the recipes together. We have uh, the number one recipe app on iPhone, iPad, Android, 10 million registered users, and uh, uh, I think my team launched the version 2.0 of the app today. Yeah. Well, it seems like hyper-customization is such a critical ingredient to this whole matrix here, that people, people want an experience that feels very personal and unique to them and caters to their specific need. Like how, how do your products deal with this idea of hyper-customization? How important is it now, and how important will it be in the future? Ben? It's yeah, incredibly important. You know, I think even from down to the recipes them, themselves, you know, that's, uh, we, we're already enabling simple substitutions uh, through a recipe. So you know, if you've got a, a specific dietary need, you can swap an ingredient out and it'll uh, um, incorporate that to the whole, through the whole recipe itself as well. But you know, I think, um, yeah, making sure that the platform is really responding to the way, to, you, to your own preferences, and that's something that we're excited about uh, launching over the next little while as well, and that making sure that we have that, that responsiveness in there as well. Okay. I, th I think in addition to, it's really helpful for the app itself to kind of learn what you're doing, kind of yeah. adapt to it. It's not a static experience, but it's really something that's dynamic that, you know, for us, we know it's your first time chopping an onion, we might put a tip on here, be careful, you might tear up, but if it's your like 50th yeah. time chopping an onion, we might show you like different type of video that shows you how to chop this onion better, almost again, slightly like a game, you know, as you get better at something, we teach you a little bit more. So it's kind of like building something that is progressive, but then also using a community side um, of it, which is, I think a lot of people also follow particular bloggers or content creators that really cater to their personal type of taste, and we create that platform. Like, I really do believe the community kind of also educating people in that process is hugely important. And I think that's a, one part that, you know, should also be focused on moving forward. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, I saw some research the other day where a third of millennials say the least favorite part of cooking is deciding what to eat. So uh, I think hyper-customization has to be something that's a big part of, uh, of the kitchen because it has to be able to understand the user. You have to be able to understand the, the consumer, and if you can't do that, you're not going to be able to deliver them the products, the services, the hardware, the software that they need. And are you, are you really aiming towards a millennial audience with these products? Is that the key demographic, or is it more about anybody that is a passionate home cook or interested in learning more about cooking, doesn't know anything about it, and needs to be empowered, or are you really targeting that younger audience? We didn't set out to target the younger audience. They just kind of navigated to us. And I think that the, the reason why you're seeing a lot more of this is, uh, you know, nowadays everybody has an app. They have, a, uh, they have their tablet or they have their mobile phone in the kitchen. There's this um, expectation of connectivity. And I think that what's leading that charge is, is our millennials. So I think that they're leading the, the bringing the tech into the kitchen. And they're, make, they're paving the way for, uh, for a lot of the innovation that's going on right now. 60% um, of millennials um, use their phone or their tablet to, to cook. And I'm, I think that's just a huge stat that um, is driving the, you know, the need for, um, for connectivity because they expect everything to be connected. Uh, they're the reason why we're here. Ben, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, no, it's actually th really interesting. I suppose, like yourself as well, we didn't uh, initially target any one demographic specifically. We're actually, uh, interestingly, actually skewing a, a little higher. You know, it's, we, we do have a, a very broad range of users from, you know, four-year-olds up to 80-year-olds. <laughs> but really, where we're seeing one of the uh, one of the biggest. Um, Bumps is in and around the 35 to 45 year old range, and it's very interesting to see that, you know, and great to see that there's that uh, adoption there as well. I, I do think that is a little bit down to some of the, the retailers we're in at the minute, being in, in Apple stores across America, and initially we were only on, on iPad. Excited that we just launched our, our iPhone app recently uh, over only only last week. So uh, and since la launching on iPhone, we're already seeing that 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 skew to start coming younger and younger. So it's a uh, uh, yeah, sort of very platform focused as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think even for us as well, it's been really hard to predict kind of how people will use these types of tools. Um, like I think we just did a, a test kitchen recently. We do these test kitchens where we sponsor groceries and have people cook with our app and see, hey, does it actually work, right? Are people cooking from start to finish? Are they, you know, burning the kitchen down or whatnot? But um, we did one recently with children um, and we had like 2,000 applications in 48 hours. And we're just like, wow, like a lot of people 
or using you know, the app to actually cook with their children um, as a pastime. And because, again, they were using this technology because it was an easy way for them to connect, with, especially with the younger children from like you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And they were so used to using the iPad for everything um, and using that as kind of a centerpiece to have that communication to be able to teach cooking in this new way. So I think a lot of it is to, they're taking the tools and they're really taking it upon themselves and how to use it. But it's kind of like they're reimagining kind of how that process of cooking or that education process looks. And I guess I'm sort of curious too is whether you, do you see this as something that would potentially replace a traditional cookbook? Is it more of a complement to traditional media? And it's not, you know, I think of the nostalgia effect of a cookbook kind of takes you on a journey and experience. This seems like there's a lot more immediacy with what you're doing. Do you see the two sort of existing, you know, side by side? I think what, you know, we're seeing now is we're seeing a shift in the mix of cookbooks. You know, we're seeing uh, for recipes, people are going online for basically the transactional component of, I need to find a recipe, I need to you know, find that quickly, and I want to make it. What I think you're starting to see more of in the um, uh, cookbook world is kind of experiential cookbooks, you know, taking you through that trip to Tuscany, uh, which is as much narrative as it is recipes, and it's a book that somebody's going to sit down and they might read it like a novel. Uh, I think that's kind of what's going to, uh, you're going to see a little bit more of that from the cookbook world. I think there's also, you know, a big, you know, there's always going to be the, the single topic cookbooks, you know, the fad diet type things. But, um, you know, for the most part, you know, I think a lot of the transactional component is moving online. What I think is like really interesting, even like talking about cookbooks and um, like in particular, I, I don't, I think Cullen's ourselves a connected kitchen scale company, for instance, really undersells us, and we actually are. It's the second that you connect the, the scale itself to the recipe app that it actually starts to become, the recipes come to life and it becomes a, an interactive cookbook. But I think, sort of, as, as you say yourself, yeah, there's that, um, that uh, experiential cookbooks that are out there that people are just, more the aspirational things that, you know, you have people just looking at great food and sort of the, the the coffee table books essentially, but yeah, really where we see ourselves is that uh, really in, in the process itself and just uh, walking you step by step through the whole recipe um, and, and a recipe that essentially starts to, to follow you. And are there any limitations though with an app? I mean, I'm thinking even something like your device goes to sleep when you, know, when you have sticky fingers and now, now what do you do? You know, how do you deal with something like, as simple as that? Well, being an industrial designer myself as well, it's, you know, really wanted to focus on the whole user experience and making sure that any of those different problems didn't happen as you're walking through a recipe and making sure that, first of all, the, the app stays awake as you're walking through it. But because we know, like no other cookbook knows exactly where you are in a recipe, because you're, like, we're right there with you as you're starting to add your first ingredient, um, the second you've added enough, it automatically moves on to the next step. So it's just this... Uh, a seamless integration between the two of them and the fact that you know, we've got a little wireless button on the on the front of the scale itself so you can automatically move on to the next step without having to, to touch the iPad itself and you know excited about uh, adding a few more interactions through that button so you can uh, so you, yeah, you need even less interaction through to touching the iPad or iPhone itself. That's good. Kevin you want to add to that? Um. Yeah, just sort of. I mean, I think, you know, we definitely look at ways, again, the iPad is a tool or the iPhone is a tool and just figuring out how, how do we use this hardware to accomplish the goal of making it easier, right? And so with voice, um, I think as, as Ben mentioned, uh, I've seen a lot of cool stuff. For, for SideChef, we have like voice commands where you can say next step, back step if your hands are dirty. But I've also seen really cool stuff that other people are doing where they, you know, they move, they swipe their hand right or left and you can actually track it through the camera as well. But again, I think there's a lot of different ways to, to accomplish that. That's so what's really interesting about, about kind of uh, the cook the cookbook um, and kind of that changing, you know. I think, by the way, also to answer your, the cookbook question too, I think it's the broader question um, looking at cookbooks and where that plays in and where, you know, it, it, it's a lot larger than just cookbooks in general. It's how we consume media. And I think it really comes down to, um, you know, as tech providers or creating a lot of this, uh, these, these new solutions, is really just creating tools and allowing, seeing how people are actually using it. People are going to try to, you know, they want the nostalgic angle, they use cookbooks, but, you know, we try to give them as many options as possible on our platform to be able to express themselves um, as a platform. That's right. Well, I mean, that is the question, too. Are people today actually cooking differently than, than they used to? And so there's more of a need to have a more connected space, a more connected experience in the kitchen. Do you feel like that has actually changed? Again, do you think that's a demographic thing? Or do you think that just the way that people are cooking has changed 
more interest in, in fresh ingredients, nutritious meals, cooking at home, being able to put something on the table really quickly, do you feel that plays into what you're doing? I think peop people have much more awareness now, uh, uh, especially on the nutrition side, and uh, a much more um, focus on the, the quality of the ingredients itself as well. So I think there's, a, there's been a, a huge change there over the last little while, and, and the move away from obviously the, the microwave meals to people wanting to be able to understand exactly what ingredients are, are in the meal that they're actually consuming and eating. So it's a, the, the only way that you can have that, that confidence is being able to make it from, from scratch yourself and, and, uh, and, uh, and walking through that whole process and really understanding it. Um, and I think that's something that we're excited about in the future as well, is really continuing to, to build on that and, and educate people on the, the nutritional side of things as well. That's interesting. Dave? Yeah, I think what you're also seeing is you're seeing uh, people are a lot more experimental in the kitchen. Uh, and I think maybe it's because they didn't learn how to traditionally cook. They, they, they learned from an app, so they just like pick up a recipe and they don't know that they shouldn't be trying sous vide yet, or they don't have any you know, preconception that they shouldn't be, um, that, it's, that it's like a difficult technique or is it an easy technique. Uh, and uh, they just jump right in. And I, I think that you're seeing a lot more of that experimentation, like people are willing to try and do anything. And then they also want to, you know, what we're also finding is that people want to make it their own as well. So they'll, they'll, they'll take a recipe, but they want to add a little bit of flair too. So they want to add something where they can say, oh, look at this, you know, it's not just the traditional recipe. I, I, I've done these two or three things to make it a little bit extra. And then it seems like everything that they do, they then want to be able to share it. And so this idea of you know, the power of social and in terms of you know, obviously a brand awareness, but also just sharing their accomplishments. So how important is that, do you think? Well, I, I, I have a strong opinion about this, which is that you know, for, for a long time, I've been hearing everybody say, which is food is social, food is social. Yeah. And I, I fundamentally disagree with it. I think that there is a part of food that's social when you get the plate delivered to you at the restaurant. When you finish that you know, plate at home, uh, you might want to take a picture and share it. But up until that point, it's actually very personal. It starts with you, your tastes, diets, allergies, your doctor says you need to be doing something. Uh, you know, and then it extends to your household maybe, and then some other external influences. But uh, I fundamentally believe that food is, is personal first before it is social. I think that's interesting. Do you, do you agree, Ben, Kevin? Um, I, actually, I totally agree on in terms of the consumption part, it is very personal. Um, the part that I would probably add is I think the recipe discovery portion is actually the part that's very uh, social. Um, in terms of you know, getting, getting a special recipe you know, from your mom or something, something that's actually passed down, or getting something from a friend and knowing there's five ways to use this particular ingredient that you didn't know how to use. Or you know, when people go on to food blogs, and for us, like we, again, we focus on building a community that allows, you, allows food bloggers to upload their own recipes and then people can follow them. When they upload new recipes, they get notifications on their phones and so forth. So it's kind of, um, the, it's mostly the recipe discovery portion, but I think definitely when it comes down to consumption, it is uh, very personal. But the, the social part comes in more of how do we, you know, how do we share creative ways to do all of these different dishes, and then, you know, and then how do I make that personal to, to me? Yeah. I think there's there's one step in between as well. It's like when you've actually finished creating what you've just created as well. I think there, there's so much intrinsic pride when when someone's been able to make a fresh load of, loaf of bread for the first time on a Sunday morning, you know, and uh, and so many people are excited about, you know bragging about that and taking a photo and sharing it and that's something that we're here we're focused on you know facilitating and make sure and it's uh, as easy as possible but you know I agree with you it, it's the the early stage in the nu nutritional side of things and any uh, focus on sort of the discovery side that people you want to keep that a little bit more secretive so it's not entirely just about sort of solving a problem there's also that sense of empowering consumers and and, and people homeowners home sh home cooks to be able to do something that they might never have been able to do before. We were talking earlier about these generations that might not have learned how to cook from their mothers or their grandmothers, and now they're like, where do I start, what do I do? And the natural sort of method for them is to find an app, you know. I think empowering is such a great word, and that's exactly what it is. You know, there's, there's this uh, dark veil over a lot of the cooking space that, you know, some people are 
are worried that when they start something that they're going to ruin it at the end of it or there, there's so much ambiguity through recipes at the minute as well you know some people even have heard you know they said oh cook it until it's brown it's like how brown like I, I, I need a Pantone reference or something um, <laughs> but, uh, like uh, showing photos the whole way through and just giving people that confidence that it's like oh I am on the right track this is what it's supposed to look like but still at the same time you know not making it a uh, an autonomous process allowing creativity through it as well and getting that's the balance that really needs to be struck correctly okay, so we're not just telling you what to do we're kind of helping you figure it out you know for, for yourself and then and then tailoring that experience to you a little bit I mean you were even talking Dave I think last night about you know what if, what if I told you like these are the five ingredients I have in my pantry like what do I do with that is that sort of the idea of what you're trying to provide for consumers well, yeah, I mean, that is a, one of a number of things, you know, which is, you know, how do, I, um, how do I make use of these things that I have that I purchased? How can I make that chicken go from uh, the roasted chicken I made on Sunday to two or three other dishes later in that week? Um, but really just being able to understand the person, you know, uh, everybody comes at food from a different angle. They come at it from you know, a fitness angle, they come at it from a medical angle, they come at it from a taste angle. Um, and it's really just being able to, uh, somebody before on one of the other panels was saying like, you know, you need to have that, that hyper customization, you know, like people come at food from, you know, a million different viewpoints. You need to be able to understand all of those viewpoints and, and deliver something to them. And that's, that's really the difficult thing. That's always what's been very difficult about food, which is it's inherently unstructured, unconnected, and and just kind of ambiguous. But, you know, we're trying, I think everything that everybody's trying to do here is make much more sense of it uh, for the consumer. And Kevin, anything to add to that? Well, I guess my next question is also looking ahead. So, you know, what is on the horizon? And you said this could make for an entire day's worth of discussion, but, you know, what's the kitchen going to look like or how are people going to be cooking in 10 years or in 20 years? What do you see as the next big thing? I think, actually think Michael Wolf's uh, article uh, in Forbes last week was like laid it out incredibly well. Like you know the fact that over the last ten years, sort of what's happened in the in the living room from Netflix, Heroku, from uh, Xboxes and Playstations, and just how um, you know the, the change and how people are consuming content now in the living room, and we're going to be seeing that that same change over the next ten years in the kitchen. And I think so much is that is going to come from the, the people in this room today, which I think is why it's so exciting to, to be here and, and and be a part of it. But uh, you know where we see you know becoming that uh, you know interactive recipe platform on top of the smart kitchen, where you'll be able to browse your recipes from what you have in your kitchen. So your your oven will automatically preheat when you get to a preheat oven step. It'll it'll turn off when the product that's inside is is actually made and finished, rather than just uh, like ambiguous time that and there's so much differences across across ovens and it'll turn off at the right time. You know, you, each one of your appliances, you'll just be able to your food processor, you'll be able to pour enough of one ingredient and it'll move on to the next and tell you what to add after that. And you know, there's just so much exciting things that can happen in this space over the next little while. Um, and I, I'm so excited to even watch uh, and observe it from the outside but actually to be uh, a part of it is uh, a very exciting uh, very exciting prospect I think um, I mean I think I definitely share the same vision in terms of kind of what that future kind of kitchen looks like um, but I think one of the important things to also note is like you know smart the smart kitchen has not taken off the way the smart home has taken off and i think it's really important to also look at why that isn't the case and i think a lot of things in in the smart home it's a one one to one kind of connection of like i walk into the house and then the temperature turns on or my favorite tv channel turns on or the locks go on and off um, but I think in the kitchen, it really comes down to you have a lot of different appliances, but you really have one specific goal when you go into the kitchen. You're trying to cook, and that usually involves lots of different appliances, um, which is very different. And being able to control that from a single platform, I think, is going to be one of the keys um, to be able to create an awesome user experience in which people can go for that inspiration, whether it's getting their groceries or then telling them how to cook, um, and then being able to uh, connect all those different parts together. So I'm, as well, very excited to you know, just be in the conversation for that. Yeah, I think one of the big difficulties, at least in the kitchen, is that the replacement cycle on large appliances is, is so long. It's like 10 years. Yeah. Um, so where you know, people are get, buying new Apple TVs every time they come out or new Apple devices every time they come out, they're not necessarily doing that with their oven. 
And so I think that that is one of the things that may slow down the, the pace of innovation in the kitchen. Um, but uh, you know, on the flip side, you have millennials and all these other people that are pushing the technology in the kitchen. So you know, it, it, may be, it may offset a little bit, but I do think that just kind of the replacement cycle is one thing to be wary of. You know, one of my favorite new devices in the kitchen is my Amazon Echo. You know, so um, that's, that's one of the things that I think it just in the last year has been, you know, one of the most interesting things um, uh, to help me out. And uh, uh, I'd like to see where that goes as well. Yeah. Well, we probably have time for maybe one or two audience questions, if there are any. Yes. Well, I mean, what I like about the, the Echo is that it's... Oh, yeah, repeat the question. Repeat the question. Oh, sorry. Uh, it, it's where do we see voice technology going in the kitchen in the future? Uh, is that pretty, cl pretty close? Um, uh, what I like about it is it's, it's actually more of a, a, um, a design issue, which is that I don't need to press a button for on my Siri in order to have it do something. I like the, the freedom of just being able to talk while I'm pulling a pan out of the oven and say, set a timer for five minutes. And, uh, and, and I think it's gonna, you know, obviously everybody's looking for kind of the voice feedback. I also think that, you know, what you'll see a lot more, I think at least in the short term, is, you know, just being able to say, you know, search for chicken cacciatore recipes, you know, without, you know, Parmesan cheese and, and stuff like that. That stuff you can already do, you can do that with Yumly. Um, the voice feedback of uh, walking you through uh, something step by step, I think that's going to be really cool when that hits the mainstream. Ben? Yeah, I second that. And I think it's like our, our platform is, is set up so well for that as well, just being able to you know, share each one of those steps as you, as you go through it. So I know that's something that we're equally excited about and, uh, and delivering on. Um, I mean, I think that question is really good. That applies to us right here, but it also applies into a much larger, a broader conversation as well, which is we're in a place where we have so many different apps on our phone that it is really too hard to interact with each one and have every, you know, we're, co we're controlling, like, again, 10 different devices in, in the kitchen with 10 different apps, and that gets a little crazy. We have games on there. We have messengers. We have so many things going on. I mean, I think a lot of people are moving towards, uh, again, Echo, Google Now, um, and Siri. Having one single point in which you can actually talk to it, interact with it, and help, help it find anything that you want. I see the future is really kind of an interactive assistant, which they're obviously already building towards, but that's along cooking, that's along everything else. You know, having somebody that, you know, one day you'll be able to talk to this thing, and it'll be like your favorite chef. It'll be an artificial intelligence that'll be talking to you like a Jarvin in, in you know, Iron Man or anything else. And I think for cooking, you know, this would be really cool when you are talking to somebody and maybe they're giving you tips. Maybe you want to be able to learn. Maybe you want to be able, I mean, you want to be able to be more hands-on and it'll adapt in terms of its artificial intelligence in order to tell you this stuff. I mean, that's, again, I think it's the hardware, but it's also very much the software in terms of giving you that experience or being that, you know, if I didn't learn this from my parents, you know, there is some sort of um, entity or, 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 or being or, or, again, software created um, that allows me to have that same experience. That's great. I think that's all we have time for. But thank you very much.